This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Welcome, welcome to DBL. It's Wednesday, July 14th. I'm Tori here with Lindsay and Alex. 
now we've been going on. Hey, 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 I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, yeah, how was your break? Good. It was awesome. We're just acting like we're just doing a show. I haven't seen well, you. Well, I saw her because I didn't see you. So what did you do over the break, Al? Because I, I don't think our I morning went show. to uh, to South Carolina, took the kids to see my mom in South Carolina. Shout out to Charleston. Lots of good food. Lo I Such heard it's food. beautiful there. I did too. Cool. Everyone's going there. That's the new spot, hot spot. Mm. All right, we're starting off with a hot spot today because we're going with the theme. And you know me. I love themes. <laughs> it's the battle of the sexes. And we are highlighting some stories about what women have to go through that men don't. Or do they? So stay with us. Up first is a story of a youth pastor who for years required girls to wear one piece bathing suits to his summer camp. Well, now he's issuing this apology saying, quote, I'm sorry that I didn't teach boys to control themselves. I'm sorry I laid the weight of purity on a girl's swimsuit while she was swimming and not on the boy's responsibility to not be gross. He goes on to tell female students to wear a swimsuit that lets you have fun and tells other male youth pastors to stop being chauvinists. So what do you make of this? And what do you think about women's bodies and their clothes being policed? So I am going to take an unpopular opinion. I think like my kid is not wearing a two piece. They're probably going to whip, but I think that's the mother or the father's choice, not the pastor's choice. So the pastor shouldn't be saying, here's what you should or not, should not be doing. But also my son, if I had one, wouldn't be wearing a Speedo as a little kid. I know that he has a stepdaughter that's a teenager. I know that he has, um, or yeah, he has a stepdaughter that's a teenager. He has, no, he has a stepdaughter that's a 10 year old. He has his own daughter that's a teenager. And so he's been through these experiences as a male, but what is her mom saying or what is she doing? Cause I know a lot of the bathing suits out there. If you go to Target, there are adult bathing suits. There are kid bathing suits. And so to me, I like the fun color kid thing, but that's up to the parents. But I don't, I think apologizing now is good, but I think coming from your pastor, that's not something that confuses me. Having gone to a Christian church as a young kid my whole life, like we would never go to the women's retreat or anything, even as young girls and wear a two piece. I don't get this at all. I grew up in a very different environment and a very progressive place without a dress code. And you we didn't grow up in the black church? <laughs> That been I awesome. did. Yeah. <laughs> no, like people what, would judge you for yeah. even wearing like a tight dress. And, and, and to me, it was like be who you are uniquely. And to me, for women, what I don't get is not only are we sexualized, we're then blamed for when the other people are, are treating us poorly. That's the double arrow I always never got that he seemed to get. What do you think, Al? Well, I mean, I, I saw this firsthand as a young guy, and I don't think I was able to process what I was looking at. But I remember I was at TJ Maxx with my sister. I was probably 10. She's probably 12. And uh, she was looking for a bathing suit and she came out and she just burst into tears. And I was like, you know, guys just point to a bathing suit. We don't even yeah. try it on. It's, it's large. It's fine. I, I, I now, as a father, look at this and I take my daughter to Great Wolf Lodge and she's in a one piece, but she's a grown woman, even though she's 14 years old. <laughs> you know, Our lawyers just extreme. called. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, I, I, I've seen it from, I, I guess, maybe a feminist point of view because I grew up in a house full of women and now Strong I have a women. daughter. And, and so I'm glad he's apologizing. A little late, Lindsay, little late, Tori. Yeah. But better late than never, right? Yeah, I completely agree. And I just will say he f apologized after trying to find a one piece for his kids mm -hmm. and couldn't and realized. And it's the empathy that you go through when you yourself have to go through it. That's what we should all be thinking about. Step into someone else's shoes or swimsuits. All right. Not literally. All right. <laughs> Up <laughs> next gross. is a story. This is gross. OK, it's getting national attention. A Florida mom is upset over what she says is the unequal treatment of girls versus boys in a state softball championship. Now, this is a kids league. Her daughter is seven. Here's what the boys division, the champions. They got a customized trophy when they won for each boy on the winning team. Cool. Well, meantime, her daughter's team won and they got a drawstring bag with a commemorative softball, a plastic luggage tag, an adult size batting glove and no trophy. The mom says she confronted the league's organizers over the unfair treatment, did not receive an apology. So what do you think again on this theme of girls getting a gift bag while the boys got trophies? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, Lindsay, look at this face. Does this look like I haven't bought some last minute gifts in my life? I know what, oh no, we didn't buy anything looks like. <laughs> and that's, that's what, what that, that bag is. was. Lindsay, they didn't have anything. Those balls, they didn't even say congratulations. They just had the logo of whatever <laughs> they were. They A glove and a luggage tag. What are those women? Flight attendants? I know. It's like that's so, and it Insulting. reminded me of the story at the NC, at NC2A the tournament first thing I with, the, with the women's gym. And they had weights, remember? The men had a whole mm -hmm. room huge, and they had one stack of weights. That's the equivalent the of that. That, that, that is the equivalent baseball of that. that no one's ever used. My God, what do you think, Liz? Well, I think this is terrible because I know being in sports or even in dance for me, when we got to the highest level or won a competition, the trophy was like the biggest deal as a kid. So to get a hand 
duffel bag, whatever that kind of bag. Gift bag. bag. Gift bag. Nothing. It's like the cheap ones that you throw by the laundry room and never touch again. To get that as the winning thing is the worst thing ever. And then to never get an apology, I think even having your mom go up to the organizer or your dad or anybody go up to the organizer and never get an apology is just trash and shame on them. I hope that they are ordering their trophies right now. I hope they are, but I bet they're not. I just want to say very quickly, it's about your value, right? If the boys are valuable enough to get those individual trophies, what does it say to a girl that she doesn't? That is a chip on her shoulder that becomes a boulder that lasts your whole life mm. time. That's I'm not kidding you. A tiny little thing like this can affect you exponentially. And I'm not trying to be like everybody gets a trophy. I'm just saying make it equal. No, the winners get a trophy. Exactly. And the fact that they hadn't thought about that. Exactly. Nobody there. Not one. Because there's no women in the that. room probably. Interesting. Let us know what you guys think. Last but not least, this is an old debate. It's all about bras. <laughs> all right, so Julian Anderson is weighing in during an Instagram Live. She's saying she is done wearing bras. Take a look at this. And I don't wear a bra anymore. I can't wear a bra. I can't, no, I can't, there's no, I'm sorry, but I don't care if I reach my belly button, my breasts reach my belly button, I'm not wearing a bra anymore. It's just too uncomfortable. Jillian, tell us how you really feel. So what do you think of Jillian vowing never to wear a bra again, knowing that bras were part of the feminist movement? People burn bras, and they've been there, just so you know, since the 14th uh, century B.C., some kind of support for breasts or placard for breasts. So I was looking up bras to see, like, who made these? I wanted it to be a man so I can go off, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't a man, but they were made out of, like, silk handkerchiefs in the beginning, and they were comfortable. They kind of, like, flowed with however your body flowed. I don't know where we got into the wiring, and the uncomfortable part, but I don't know anybody who likes to wear a bra. I know maybe it looks this nice. This is shocking to me. Really? Shock? I had no idea. You're kidding me. I'm dead serious. This is how ignorant Ow, why would you want to wear wires that, under your vulnerable I, I remember tissue I spots. asked my girl, I was like, is that uncomfortable? She was like, yes, dummy. Like, I had no idea. People it, get home from work and look forward to taking off their bra. What's That's the their sound you make? What's the sound you make? You're like, I go, ah. Is it the first thing you do? The first thing you do. It doesn't matter about anything else. Wow. The first I would thing think that, that you, you get used to it almost like wearing like a wedding ring or no, something. No, do you wear a jock strap every day? <laughs> uh, only on Friday nights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's like that is very uncomfortable. And may I say, maybe it looks good for some women. That's because society has told us that breasts should look perfectly uniform and round. Breasts are different sizes. We know what breasts are. You're using your hands a lot. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying they're different sizes. They're natural. They're not perfectly round. They're cone-shaped. They're different. They're lovely. And they should be accepted anyway. And because of that, there's so many uncomfortable contraptions. I know even Kim Kardashian famously said that she took, uh, what is it, duct tape and was like taping her boobs up before, I guess, skims or her line came okay. out with something better. I got than a that. question for y'all, really quickly. Okay, we make a proclamation now. You can, you have to wear a bra for the rest of your life, or you can never wear one again. What are you going with? I'm talking about evening dresses, wherever. Never again. They got pasties, wow. everything. I'm super vain, so I will say bra. Really? Okay. But I know how hypocritical I sound, and I'm doing it because I'm in a visual work p position, and that's because society tells me to. That's no, right. I'm, I'm going no bra. Good for you, right. Lindsay. Good for you. Coming up on ZBL. Lindsay 2024. <laughs> She's running, guys. Suzanne Summers is back, and how she and her husband manage to stay fit and fabulous at any age, they let us know. And what the fish? The warning from wildlife officials that about these disgusting. giant goldfish popping up in lakes. Good luck. Stay tuned. Closed captioning provided by DBL Nation, it's Kelly Schubert here with the DBL Digital Team. We are so happy you're here with us today. We've got a battle of the sexes going on. Let's go up and continue the conversation with the host. Guys, if I never had to wear a bra again, I would never wear a bra again. During quarantine, I think my tissues got used to not wearing a bra, so now that I have to wear a bra again, it's really hard to get used to, I'm not gonna lie. And we got used to putting on clothes. But do you yeah. understand why? You know, you jeans? used to be dressed top up. Jeans were terrible. For me, I, know. I couldn't fit my jeans, obviously. But, you know, my dad, when I, I put them back on, I think I'm gonna dread that, especially like the really I didn't good think it was quality rough material. Bra. Yeah, I agree. Like, how do you go back to any of that? Do you no. think there's any al alternative or just like no bras? If, if you're, because they, they said that the salt, the tissues that they were originally made from it does seem comfortable. So they do have when those the bralettes. They do have the bralettes that are pretty comfortable. Uh, but if for someone like me yeah. 
or Tori or Lindsay. I mean, it, that doesn't do anything. Right. It just kind of sits there like, on what, your body. Right now, it doesn't do any lifting. Like right now, I'm wearing something called a Squeam. S Q U E E M. It's like 50 bucks. I wear it every single day. I'm being super honest. It's a full corset with ribbing, and it has three clips yeah. and I get to choose how heavy I feel that day and I squeeze myself in. Now, do I feel great? Yes. <laughs> do I feel like a terrible feminist? One minute. Yes, I am Michael D. <laughs> oh, sounds bad. And you know, like, uh, Hoda and Kathy Lee used to talk about this on the Today Show. They wore two Spanx. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Double how Spanx. uncomfortable is that? This is Double like Spanx. a real corset, like whale bone. And again, okay. it goes back to what society is telling us. I, I don't want that little pouch. I don't want the saggy. Uh, what about sports bras? How do they feel? They, become, so they, they don't look right. They feel great, clothes. but they don't. They don't. You're gonna yeah. see like um. You, like you, Lindsay and Tori couldn't yeah. wear sports yeah, bras right now. Yeah, because they come up here, so yeah. you see the sports bras. I could maybe bra. get away with it with yeah. this shirt, but most of the time you can't. It looks oh. bad. It wouldn't look good. Ladies of DBL Nation, I'm let us know what you think. If you could go without a bra for the rest of your life, would you? I would. Welcome back to DBL. All right, here's a strange but true story. Have y'all seen this? Officials, officials. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder who those people officials are. Officials, <laughs> get it? Fish in Minnesota say giant goldfish are invading their lakes and rivers. It's so bad they're pleading with folks, please stop dumping unwanted fish in the lakes. They say they're bad for the natural environment and can wreak havoc on native species. Instead, they say to give them to more responsible neighbors or friends. So did you what? have an I I know, I know. <laughs> give them to your homeboy. Oh, <laughs> so, Lindsay, are you up? <laughs> Sorry to call you at 1230. I got a goldfish in the home. It is a weird, <laughs> it's a weird, weird advice. I agree. Now, did you have any idea goldfish could get that big? What do you think of people dumping them in the lake? I have a little stat for you. Last November, wildlife officials removed a truckload of 500,000 of these goldfish. Mm. I would think that I was being the best Good Samaritan of all time, bringing my goldfish to the lake instead of being the ill-prepared goldfish parent that I was at the time right. when I was a kid. I, I, I can't believe this is such terrible news. And who's going to call their friend and be like, but yeah, can you take my fish? But how is it noble to take it to the lake? <laughs> because you think it's going to be free. free. It's like you go to the no, zoo. You're free of the responsibility of feeding it every day. You have all these people who complain about animals not being free in their natural habitat. So in my mind, the fish belongs in the lake. I'm sure it'll do well in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, I, honestly, first of all, let's just stop giving goldfish as pets because they're terrible pets. Really? And no Are they? one cares. Yeah, I know what you mean. You give it to your kid and they're like, thanks, where's my tablet? Yeah. They don't care. <laughs> so no one cares. So like, let's stop giving goldfish. What if you named your goldfish tablet? Huh? Oh, there we go. No. No. Okay. no. <laughs> no. All right. Well, okay. Wait, can I ask a question? Yeah. So I had a crayfish as a kid. They gave us. You mean a, as a pet? Yeah, as a pet. Oh, oh. And then I saw. I, don't you eat I, those? Yeah. yeah. Well, I went down to Houston for the first time uh -oh. a couple years ago with Colin and they boiled crawfish or crayfish, whatever they want to call it, and I was so disgusted. Did anybody else not have a crayfish-like science project as a kid to keep take home? I did. We used to have to dissect those, and especially... Dissect? A, a, no, you a, took care of it. A, the took care of No, we took those apart, boo. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was traumatized. That's disgusting also. I don't know we what's going those on apart. in our schools. In New York, Long Island schools, we took care of our crayfish until they passed away. In the South, we eat them. Until em. they passed away? What kind of... <laughs> it's it's like a Viking funeral for a water bug? <laughs> we love it's you. It's a water roach. <laughs> a water roach. <laughs> Trying to be, oh, you know, man. passed away. Uh, water Guys, I have some <laughs> difficult news to share on Facebook tonight. <laughs> I love it. He's passed, but not forgotten. All right, before we go to break, we've got some crazy viral video. This is from the Utah Division of Wildlife, and this shows how they restock mountain lakes with trout. Speaking of fish, okay, they fly them and just dump them. That's it. Over the lakes. <laughs> they say the aerial dumps are effective and safe, especially for lakes that are hard to reach by road. And if you're wondering, the survival rate of the fish, it's 95%. Yeah, How what's can we the prove concussion that? rate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, Can you man. imagine Al? Al, it's just a fish being like, I don't know where I am. I don't know where it's I am. So traumatizing. They're down there now. Lindsay's fish is like, sup, y'all? <laughs> a fish funeral. It's my hood. <laughs> it's my hood. We'll my, end it. My great fish friend passed away. <laughs> may he rest. Oh, oh may he rest. Coming up on ZBL, we're chatting with the Suzanne Summers and her husband, who's a secret weapon, I think, about the secrets to their decades long marriage and how to rock confidence at any age. Stay tuned. Oh,
with your fast fact. Venmo and Cash App users received an email explaining new fees for some transactions. That's leading to posts from frustrated small business owners like this one with more than 60,000 shares. So let's verify. Are Venmo and Cash App charging fees for businesses? Our sources are Venmo owner PayPal and Cash App. Cash App already takes a percentage of business transactions, while Venmo says it will start later this month when it will ask senders to mark if they're paying for goods or services. Venmo says this gives customers some protection in case something goes wrong. With personal accounts, once the money is sent, there's little recourse to get the money back. So it's true, Venmo and Cash App are charging businesses fees for using their apps. This doesn't apply to personal transactions, so keep splitting the check among friends. With your Fast Fact, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back to DVL. From dishing on their sex lives to living their best lives, Suzanne Summers and her husband, Alan Hamill, are back to give us some tips on how to stay healthy into our 70s, our 80s, and 90s. We spoke to them earlier in today's Chatting with the Stars. There they are, Suzanne and Alan. Welcome back to DVL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me and my big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you guys fit right in here, and we all want to live your lives. I feel like that you guys are like the, the goals, couples goals. So, uh, Suzanne, the last time you were on our show, you were talking about the benefits of your product, Gut Renew. And in fact, a lot of our viewers said that they wanted to try it. Even our own Al Jackson said he wanted to try it. We have some proof that he did. Take a look. And, and I'm still down to take the challenge. Start. You need that to. Okay, I want you to, and I'll come 30 back. 30 days. Yes. I'm sure come back. There yes, you go. in 30 days, we are going to reconnect with you. Okay, Suzanne, it's been 30 days. Yep, let's let's put Al on the hot seat here. So, Al, okay, did, Al. did hey, you hey. do it? What's up? First of all, good to see both of you guys. And, I, and the reason I took this challenge initially is I was just like, I've already been kind of doing shakes in the morning anyway, so this wasn't too far off of my routine. So I just uh, replaced uh, what you sent with my normal shake. It's been 30 days, and I actually have proof. So I don't know if we have that footage, but if we do, let's roll it. My morning routine is super easy. I take my pills with my vitamins and I take my prebiotic. It smells like when you were a little kid and you still had hope. So this looks like something in the future that makes you smarter. And I just wash that down with a beautiful check I just made. Delicious. Do I have a mustache? Ladies, two weeks still going. I still add my kale. I kind of like it and I feel good because I got my greens out of the way. Mm, double duty. All right, y'all, last one. Not forever, but for this segment. So to celebrate, I added like some chia seeds to it too. That's uh, what we call a 44-year-old's birthday. Delicious. Suzanne, I couldn't have done it without you, girl. What? <laughs> hey, you did it. I, I feel, Yay, and how I does feel that great. Taste? I feel great, and you, you know, the only thing I got thrown off for three days, I went to South Carolina with my family, uh, ate uh, in a way that was disrespectful to everybody. Uh, so, I, but I am back, and I, and I feel good, so I really do appreciate you. I really do. Did it give you mojo like they have? I, I'm, I feel like it did. I mean, I'm not sunglasses inside yet, Alan, but I'm getting there, bro. You look good. Well, you know, you know, when you're not bloated, you're in the mood. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. We'll see you tonight. No one, no one who's bloated is in the mood. So I, I'm, this is our, our gift to humanity. 
Well, to I perpetuation of the species. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alan, Alan, you just celebrated your 85th birthday. Congratulations. You look oh terrific. What's Isn't your it? secret, Alan? You look great. I have a live-in doctor. <laughs> doctor. She actually has her doctorate. Okay? I have a live-in doctor, and she makes sure that I get my jab once a week with testosterone. Ooh. She makes sure that I get all my pills that I'm supposed to take, that I gag down every morning with my smoothie. By the way, that's a good idea, putting the pills right into yeah, the smoothie. Yeah. I could, you could do that with the exception of, of uh, oil. fish oil. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. The rest of them could go in there. That's a great idea. So well, thank I you. I want to unbutton my shirt just once. Do for it. Alan. <laughs> David, you could bring well, it. Well, oh, yeah. You know, Tom Ford. Tom Ford was over one night, Ooh. and he looks over at Alan, and he unbuttons two buttons. He goes, "There, looks much better." Yeah. You know what? It does. It does. That's that's his new look now. He's a beautiful man. <laughs> Wait, first of all, Suzanne and Alan, just take a look here. Not only are you guys inspiring Jeff to unbutton his shirt, but now you've inspired Al to wear sunglasses inside. Yes. Okay. We're okay. raising our inner Alan. Yes. That's Li great. We're living okay. our truth. Well, Dr. Oh, Suzanne, yeah. I don't Hi. know if you heard. Uh, you heard. Uh, hello. Um, you heard us talking earlier, but we were talking about Instagram, and of course, you've posted some iconic photos. Recently, you were wearing some Chrissy Snow short shorts with your granddaughter. So, what do you say to the haters? Because I know people come for you because um, you know you're the queen, and everybody comes for the queen. Look how uh, good she so looks. Do, how do you how do you feel when people say that you're too old to wear short shorts? Yeah, I, I want to say, ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> They're just jealous, Suzanne. <laughs> you know, um, I sell my age. I, I never thought that when you hit 74 that you could like the way you look, and I do. And it's hot here in the desert. Right today, right now, it's about 111. Oh, no. It's really just a lot more comfortable. So I was down in the kitchen wearing my cutoff jeans, and my granddaughter walks on. I go, oops, look, we're just exactly the same. I couldn't <laughs> believe that picture went viral. Before we say goodbye, let's remind our viewers one more time about Gut Renew health supplements Thanks. tried and tested, not only by Suzanne, but by Al. I'm living proof. L learn more about the 30-day challenge at SuzanneSummers.com. Thank you both so much for being here again. We really Thanks. do adore you Thanks. guys. And congratulations, Al. Yeah. Uh, here's to a flat gut forever. That's yeah. right. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back. Bye, guys. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... Otani is currently leading Major League Baseball in home runs and is third in RBIs, but that's not what makes him special. He's a two-way player, dominating on the mound as a starting pitcher and at the plate as a hitter. This combination is leading sports fans to compare him to baseball legend Babe Ruth. So let's verify. Is Otani the best two-way player since Babe Ruth? Our sources are Major League Baseball, Negro Leagues experts Carl Lindholm and Phil Dixon, and Fangraph's Jay Jaffe, who says Ruth may not be the best comparison. You could say Ruth was there, but again, he wasn't really doing this you know, day in, day out, back and forth uh, the way that Otani is. So I don't think there's anybody we can really compare him to in that regard. Ruth started as a pitcher through 1919 and then became an all-star hitter in 1920 when he hit a then record 54 home runs in a season for the Yankees. Otani is on pace to exceed those numbers this season. Yes, Otani is is, is uh, uh, putting together a Ruthian season. But you should also know about these other great two-way players. Those players include Negro League two-way star Bullet Rogan and Martin DeHigo. According to BaseballReference.com, in 1922, Rogan was second in the National Negro Leagues in home runs, second in strikeouts, and had the third best earned run average. In 1929, DeHigo had the best ERA in the American Negro League of any pitcher with at least five starts and was second in home runs. And some historians argue the Negro League players were even better than what the stat sheets show. Those numbers don't really reflect what was really was going on. They've just taken some games that they played against other black teams, but they played some many times more exhibition games than they did uh, in games in the league. The Negro League teams, because of the economic factor, didn't carry as many players. They, they played every day. 
And so if they weren't pitching, they were in the fields. That's what Otani is doing. You know, Otani is batting second and playing in the outfield or DHing when he's not pitching. Uh, that that absolutely the Negro Leaguers did. Otani is on pace to hit more than 60 home runs and strike out more than 170 batters. Despite that two-way success, it's false that Otani is the best two-way player since Babe Ruth because it fails to account for the best Negro League players. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back to DBO. A lot of people spent time during the pandemic remodeling their homes, but did you know some renovations could end up costing you more? We're chatting about it on today's Bang for Your Buck presented by the Hartford. So there are three renovations that can hurt your home value. First, lighting fixtures. Avoid any ornate and fancy ones and opt for super practical. Two, don't turn your guest bedroom into an office. Buyers are looking for more bedrooms these days. And third, when it comes to paint, keep it neutral, avoid bright colors, pick something you'd be happy with for years to come. When it comes to your home, it's all about peace of mind. Having the right insurance is so important, and we've made it easy for you for quality and affordable insurance. The Bucks got your back. The Hartford will be happy to provide you solutions. Call the Hartford at 1-800-684-6085 or visit thehartford.com to learn more. Smart. Yeah, Lindsay, did you think about these? You, you just got a house? You just moved well, in. the lighting fixtures thing bothers me because I was really about to go over the top with the, <laughs> I was actually just there yesterday at a Like you're going place, extra. And it was super extra. We reeled it back and took a timeout. We got to talk about it. Well, I painted my dining room a dark midnight blue. So now I'm like, dang it. I got to mm. change that. You got to do what you love. All right. TVL's new every day. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye, guys.